Bright lances of particle fire rained down from the sky, reducing the once mighty skyscrapers of New York City to molten slag. The streets, just hours earlier filled with honking taxis and bustling crowds, were now deserted wastelands. Fires raged unchecked through storefronts and apartments, acrid black smoke choking the air. High above the decimated city, the enormous Xergon mothership hung in the sky, bloated and sinister, slowly circling like a vulture waiting on carrion. The ship was a metallic leviathan, bristling with countless plasma turrets and torpedo bays. Rows of hangar doors pockmarked the vessel, disgorging fresh waves of Xergon fighters to continue the relentless bombardment. Deep within the bowels of the mothership, General Rachnos observed the annihilation with grim satisfaction. The last pockets of human resistance on the surface were finally being snuffed out. The Xergon ground battalions were completing their sweep, ruthless and efficient as always. Soon, this planet they called Earth would belong solely to the Xergon Empire. Rachnos had spearheaded the assault himself, his was the flagship that had ruptured into real space in high orbit, unleashing the first apocalyptic barrage on the unsuspecting humans below. Though humanity had mustered some crude nuclear-based defenses, a few hundred million lost in the opening volley was a small price to pay to claim this lush new planet. In the aftermath, Swarming dropships and mechanized walkers had deployed across every population center and military installation. The humans valiantly attempted to rally local defenses, but their projectile weapons and chemical explosives were laughably archaic against Xergon plasma shields and particle beams. Within days, the major governments had collapsed into anarchy. Any survivors were scattered and in hiding. Monitoring the external vid feeds, Rachnos watched as one of his destroyers used its gravity lances to tear a ragged gash down the entire length of the Empire State Building. The once arrogant humans had built so high as if to touch the very stars themselves. But now their cities were being ground back into the dirt and soon only the name of this conquered world would remember that humanity ever crawled across its surface. A subordinate approached Rachnos with a status report. The extermination proceeds according to schedule. New York City is 97% sterilized. Our mechanized battalions have crushed the last holdouts in Beijing and Berlin. Orbital scans detect no organized resistance remaining. Rachnos dismissed the officer with a wave of his chitinous claw. The takeover was proceeding perfectly. Perhaps he would build a new palace for himself atop the ruins of this pathetic United Nations they once had here, a fitting symbol of Zergan supremacy. Elsewhere on the mothership, Captain Zera was boarding a dropship bound for the surface. She was to oversee pacification efforts in New York and eradicate any last pockets of survivors. Around her, Zergan shock troopers clutched pulse rifles and chattered with anticipation over ripping apart any humans they found. The invasion had gone so smoothly, it was almost disappointing they had not gotten to directly engage more of the primitives. Xera's dropship detached with a hiss and rocketed toward the city. As it descended, details of the devastation became clear. Entire blocks were hollowed out the mangled remains of ground vehicles choking the streets. The lucky ones had died instantly in the bombardment, but less fortunate humans could be made out wandering dazedly through the rubble, injured and shell-shocked. Xera's ship methodically vaporized them from above with searing neutron beams. Finally, the dropship touched down in what was left of Central Park. The trees were shattered sticks, the ponds boiling from residual energy discharge. Xera and her squad disembarked and began combing through the area. According to her scans, nothing remained alive nearby. Satisfied, Xera established a perimeter and reported the sector secured to General Rachnos. Once the rest of her troops mopped up here, they would move deeper into the city. Perhaps a few stragglers remained to be exterminated for sport. 
Soon, humanity would be nothing but a memory. Captain Zara marched her squad through the rubble and wreckage of what had once been a human commercial district. Smashed storefronts lined the cracked streets, merchandise and personal belongings scattered across the debris-choked sidewalks, dropped purses, abandoned baby carriages, a singed stuffed animal clinging to a broken window frame. These were the last pathetic traces of a now extinct species. Zara scanned the area, but her sensors detected no movement or life signs. This sector had been raised clean by the initial bombardment from the mothership's planetary cannons. Nothing could have survived this annihilation. Satisfied, Zera established a perimeter to wait for extraction back to orbit. The extermination of humanity on this continent was nearly complete. Once her troops finished mopping up, they would move across the ocean to sterilize the other landmass the humans had called Europe and Asia. Primitive as they were, the humans had infested nearly every ecosystem of this planet like vermin, but soon their complete extinction would be guaranteed. As Zira transmitted a status update to General Rachnos aboard the mothership, her sensor suddenly began wailing proximity alerts. She whirled, pulse rifle ready to fire on the approaching contact, but what she saw made her antennae quiver in disbelief. Marching towards them through the rubble was a single human, massively built, with skin the color of the natives. His clothing was ripped and oil-stained, but he showed no signs of fear or distress. If anything, his expression was one of determination. Before Zera could react, the human called out in its native language. She did not comprehend the words, but the meaning was clear, a challenge and a defiance. This was impossible. Scans showed no human survivors remained on this entire landmass. Target the intruder, Zira shouted to her squad. Their combined particle fire vaporized entire city blocks in seconds. But impossibly, the blast seemed to pass right through the human with no effect. Closing the distance in heartbeat, the human let loose a battle cry and smashed into Zira's troops with astounding force. The first row of Zergon soldiers exploded into shattered carapaces from the impact. The human whirled with impossible speed, landing blows that crumpled mechanized armor like paper. Zera kept firing desperately, but nothing could slow its relentless advance. In a last desperate act, Zera triggered her emergency transponder to open a dimensional gateway. Reinforcements poured out, plasma cannons blazing. But the human was unstoppable, a raw force of nature. It tore through the Xergon rank seemingly unharmed, all the while taunting them in its strange language. As the terrible realization dawned on her, Zera knew reinforcements would be useless. This was no normal human. This was a legend come to life, the mythical champion they had dismissed as a fanciful story. John Cena had returned to Earth and all Xergen would pay for their folly. John Cena waded through the wreckage left by the invading Xergen forces. The smoking ruins of New York City bore testament to the devastation they had unleashed, but Cena was determined to drive them from Earth, whatever the cost. Ahead, Captain Zera's mechanized battle armor rose up on insectoid limbs, easily three times Cena's height. Desperate, she fired her integrated plasma casters at him. But the searing blast splashed harmlessly off Cena's impervious skin. That all you got? He taunted. With explosive speed, he launched himself skyward and came crashing down on Zira with an earth-shaking clothesline that sent her crashing through the remains of a brick wall. Her system sputtered sparks and warnings. Never had she faced a foe, with even a fraction of this human's power. But Zera had one last desperate play. With her armor's power core dangerously destabilizing, she transmitted an emergency portal activation. A singularities tore open before her, and for a moment she felt hope, but it was not Zergen warriors who emerged. Another impossibly powerful human strode through, this one with bronze skin and a surrounding energy aura, 
His very presence seemed to radiate charisma and confidence. You look like you could use a tag team partner, the man bellowed to Cena. Together, they advanced on Zera, weathering her increasingly feeble attacks. Always good to see you, Rock, Cena replied, raising his fists. Get ready for a blast from the past. Cena and the Rock came together like two irresistible forces of nature. Xera could scarcely track their movements as they battered her armor into scrap. Their matching power and personalities played off one another, bolstering their relentless assault. All around them, cheers and triumphant cries could be heard as New York's few surviving humans emerged to rally behind these legends reborn. Cena and Rock together might truly be enough to turn the tide. With an echoing crack, Zira's command module shattered. As darkness claimed her, the last thing she heard was the humans chanting their heroes' names. Rising to the challenge, Cena and Rock clasped hands and turned their eyes to the Zergon mothership looming above. Though the alien threat still seemed endless, with this reunited team leading the charge, humanity once again had hope. Legends never truly died, and sometimes they returned when needed most. The Zergon would soon face the wrath of these icons, and standing shoulder to shoulder, the Rock and John Cena swore that no matter what it took, they would drive the invaders from Earth's skies. From high orbit to the scorched streets below, the Zergon would learn that on this world, mankind never gave up, and united, compassion and courage were the greatest strengths of all. John Cena and The Rock stood triumphant amidst the rubble of New York City. Though the Xergon invasion had brought humanity to its knees, these returned legends gave people the spark of hope they so desperately needed. News spread rapidly through scattered survivor groups and resistance pockets. John Cena and The Rock were back to turn the tide against the alien conquerors, and wherever the people's hope returned, fight awoke with it. In the Pacific, long dormant emergency bunkers cracked open on remote islands, unleashing squadrons of experimental Jaeger mechs. These nuclear-powered giants had been designed in case of kaiju attack, but now rallied as one to combat the alien walkers. Energy blades and plasma casters met in brilliant flashes above the ocean waves. In the Himalayas, the mythical yeti emerged from seclusion, incensed at the decimation of its pristine peaks. With terrible roars, the abominable snowmen tore through Zergon dropships, pulling pilots from hatches to meet icy oblivion. Meanwhile, orbiting beyond the moon, the remnants of Earth's secret Orion fleet broke radio silence. Catching the Zergon mothership by surprise, they launched volley after volley at its unshielded underside. Explosions blossomed along the vast hull. On the streets below, The Rock and John Cena led emboldened civilians in hit-and-run strikes. They showed the people how targeting power cores and sensor clusters could bring down the vaunted Zergon technology. Ad hoc militias came together around Cena and Rock's leadership. When a Zergon assault carrier descended to crush this fledgling resistance, the two legends were ready. While Cena drew its firepower pummeling through its hull, Rock commandeered a downed Xergon fighter. Its weapons pummeled the assault carrier's thrusters and navigation array. Out of control, the massive ship careened into a rubble-choked harbor. From the burning wings they ripped free, Cena and Rock retrieved interstellar communication nodes. Tapping into the Xergon battle net, they discovered a pending reinforcement fleet, but also the mothership's fatal structural weakness. A coordinated strike just might win the war. Rallying survivors into a ragtag army, Cena and Rock began preparations to reclaim New York as a base of operations. From the ashes, they would launch a new bold offensive. Once more united with common purpose, humanity's true power shone through and soon the Xergon would witness it firsthand. The battered but unbroken remnants of humanity rallied around New York City, united by a new flame of hope. 
Under John Cena and The Rock's leadership, scattered survivor groups consolidated into a force to be reckoned with. Squads armed themselves with repurposed Xurgan weaponry and mounted daring strikes against orbital platforms and isolated battalions. Communication was restored between resistance pockets, coordinating crucial intelligence. One by one, human strongholds emerged from hiding. In low orbit, the Orion fleet pressed the offensive, blasting the Zergan mothership's weakened shields. They paved the way for Jaeger squadrons to dock with the hull and unleash crews to wreak havoc inside. Down in New York, Cena and Rock readied their ragtag army for a final bold gambit, a unified ground assault. They would draw the fleet's attention while a specialized strike team led by Cena and Rock infiltrated to destroy the vessel from within. At the predetermined hour, all forces unleashed hell. Plasma beams and missiles erupted in all directions as Jaegers catapulted into the fray. Along the coastline, massed artillery bombarded the mothership stabilizers. Aboard the battered flagship, General Rachnos reeled in disbelief. The humans were fighting back with cohesion and tenacity. How had they turned the tide so abruptly? In desperation, he diverted all power to shields and weapons, pulling ships from around the globe. This was the chance Cena and Rock needed. They led their squad through chaotic corridors deep into the vessel's core. Internal explosions heralded their progress, taking out bulkheads and reactors. Alarms wailed across the colossal ship. Bursting onto the bridge, Cena and Rock confronted the corner general. Rachnos reacted furiously, opening fire with all his personal weaponry, but even together, he was no match for these two legends. Their combined barrage shorted out his exosuit systems. With life support offline, Rachnos finally admitted defeat. Across the globe, Xergen forces had no choice but to follow suit in surrender. Their horrors ended at last. Though bitter losses were suffered against all odds, humanity persevered through unity and determination. Cena and Rock went down in history as the greatest heroes and saviors of humankind. Though the rebuilding took generations, Earth emerged stronger than ever before, and the courage of humanity's spirit shone brighter still, a beacon of resolve that would light the darkest hour. This was the true power within all, 